In this video, we're going to go over how to create custom metal art designs using the My Easy Monogram Design Studio. To start, log into your Shopify, go to your apps and select My Easy Monogram. Once you're in the My Easy Monogram app, you're going to select products. And then under all products, you're going to select design studio products and then custom steel wall decor. This is where all of your custom designs will be listed um, underneath this product here. So to start creating a new order, you can click create new. and then select create design. This is going to bring you into the Design Studio artboard. To start, you can add a new image. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in an existing design. You're gonna to want to make sure that your design is stretched to the entire artboard. When creating your designs, we suggest starting with a 12 by 12 inch artboard uh, if you're using Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop um, to ensure that your products are sized correctly. A uh, 12 inch sign is our smallest size, so we suggest starting with that, that size to minimize the risk of any issues because when you're scaling up your designs to the larger sizes, um, if it's working for a 12 inch, you should have no issues with the, the larger sizes. If you haven't, if this is your first time designing, I would make sure that you're reviewing the custom steel wall decor article in the My Easy Monogram resources for all the design requirements. So once you have your image uploaded, sized properly, you can use the alignment tool to make sure that it's aligned properly. And we're gonna go ahead and add in a text layer. So you can upload your own font. Um, there is a My Easy Monogram article for creating new fonts as well, or you can just come over to all fonts and import one of the fonts that are already available. And I'm actually gonna select a different font here. Okay. So once you have your font pulled in, um, you can adjust the size and place it properly for positive text. Uh, this is an example of positive text right here. Uh, it does need to be black. And you can zoom in, make sure that everything is touching. If it's not touching, you're going to run into issues in production. So make sure that everything is touching. And also, you can, you're going to want to make sure you label your layers correctly. So for this image, for example, say, um, an image for text box. Uh, this is what's going to appear on your website for the personalization. So this I would do top text, for example. And then let's say we're going to add another font. So any font that's going to go on the metal does need to be um, a stencil font. And it will need to be white. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it down here for now. For negative font, negative text, it does need to be white. So let's say kitchen, for example. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Align center. Um, I'm going to validate this to be uppercase. Um, this one, probably don't want it to exceed 
10 characters. So this is important. Make sure that you're um, updating your validation to be uppercase, lowercase, or none, and the maximum count. If you have too many characters here, especially in smaller spaces, it's going to squeeze too tight and make the text too small, which can create production issues. So make sure you're validating that. You can also wrap the text that's obviously not needed for this one. And let's go ahead and make sure that we label this one bottom text. Okay. And this one, let's go ahead and update the text to say grandma's kitchen. And I let's zoom in a little bit here, make sure that's all connecting well. Okay, yes. That looks good. And for your anything that requires personalization, you do need to make sure that it's unlocked. If you lock this, it will not show up for personalization. So let's just say, for example, on um, this bottom text, you always want it to say kitchen. And you don't want the customer to be able to update that. Just as an example, I wouldn't necessarily do that here. You could lock that and then the customer will not be able to um, update the, the personalization. Oops. I accidentally deleted the whole thing. All right, let's go back and bring that in here. Okay, and then I would rearrange these also to make sure um, that it's a smooth process for the customer. So top text is showing up first, and then bottom text is showing up second. Uh, you can also group these layers. Um, if there's different type of fonts, for example, that you're wanting to offer um, or different images, so if you're, say, for example, you want to have, you know, different images for the same product, it's just going to have maybe different, instead of a spoon and a whisk, it may have, you know, different kitchen utensils. Uh, you could import multiple images here and then group those images together by selecting it, select group layer, make sure you title the layer, and then each um, image within that group as well. So we're going to go ahead. Um, and also another thing that you can do uh, when you're, you can click and drag, of course, to move your um, layers, but you can also use dimensions and just bump things up or down. So you get, well, actually, let me do a more dramatic. See how it's moving down when I'm updating the Y here. So you can use that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a placeholder text in here. Grandma's on the top text and kitchen on second. You can see even though I'm not typing in caps, it is capitalizing the letters because I have the validation in place to do so. So you're going to go ahead and save, and it's going to generate the preview images for each variant. Okay. Now on this next screen, this is where you can add your mock-up scenes. So you can select scenes that are pre-existing. So for example, we have a kitchen one here. Um, if you select this option right here, default, this is going to change the de default image 
that your customer is seeing in the preview. So if you don't select this, it's just going to stay the variant color, black, gold, white, for example. Um, but if you do select this, it's going to update it to this mock-up scene. And you can also add your own scene. So all scenes, the first tab, these are ones that have been uploaded by other sellers and they've made them public, so they're available for you. And here, this is where you can upload your own scene. So for example, let's say we're gonna create new and a thousand by thousand is gonna be your standard size. And oh, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and add my image in. So when you click image, that's going to bring in the image that you just designed. And then for the background, you can either add a new image here and bring it in, or you can pull from an existing image that you've already created. So from here, you can size it appropriately. And you can see the image is already giving it texture to make it look more realistic. Um, you can also adjust the brightness, the contrast. You can add a drop shadow in here, update um, or adjust the, um, the offset of your drop shadow. So let's say we're happy with that. It's good. We're going to go ahead and save and close. You can make it public um, for other sellers to be able to use as well and then click save. So now we have this scene in there. We could also see. add the other one in, okay. Make sure that's stuck, okay. So now we're going to continue to details. From here, you can title. However you like, you can update the description. Uh, right here, if you select hold orders, uh, this is a great new feature that's available. Um, if you're, for example, placing orders on Etsy, and you want to be able to list this product, but you're manually updating the, the design for whatever reason, maybe it's a more complicated design, you can select this option so that every time somebody orders that sign, it's automatically gonna go on hold, and then you can update the production file. Again, that's if you're um, creating the orders or the, the designs manually for each individual customer. You can also put it on if you wanted to for whatever reason, but um, it's a great uh, tool for that. And then if you come down here, you'll see all of your different variant options are available. You can deselect if you don't want those available. And you'll notice the scenes are not there yet. Don't worry. Uh, it's once we go through and publish it to the store, they will show up here. So when you come back in, they will be available there. Uh, from here, you can also see all of your uh, different variants that are available. You can toggle the different options on and off. Uh, make sure you're using the global pricing rules so that it's automatically updating your pricing appropriately here. You can also manually adjust uh, in this area. So we're going to go ahead and publish. So now it has been pushed to my store and you can click preview and come in to the product. Make sure that you are uh, selecting the correct Shopify product theme template to make sure that the MEM app is working properly for the uh, personalization. Um, if you haven't already set that up, you'll want to go into um, the resources, the Mize Monogram resources, and uh, there's an article under getting started. It's labeled personalization live preview setup, and all the instructions will be there to get that set up properly.
And I just realized I clicked on the wrong one. I meant to click on the kitchen sign. So from here, you can see it's defaulting to MEM embed. If you're using modal, uh, you can swap over to modal um, or, you know, whatever theme template you have set up in your Shopify. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or need any help, make sure to log a ticket, reach out to support, and they'd be happy to help you.